Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to talk today about how we can tame our, uh, com the complexity of our applications. And we're going to try to see how state machines can help, us, uh, can help us with that. Also using types, which can save us from some bugs. First of all, uh, it's great to be back here. I was also last year at JS Heroes. And I had a great time. And if you don't believe me that I was here, this is me. <laughs> In the official photo, so yeah. Uh, I'm uh, Bogdan uh, Zaboko on uh, Twitter and other things. I'm a software developer at Hootsuite, where I uh, write React with TypeScript for now. And I also played with Elm at home. And I mentioned that because uh, some ideas from this talk are uh, borrowed or stolen, as you wish, from, uh, from Elm and the Elm architecture. So for those of you who know Elm, uh, you might find those, uh, might fi find those uh, familiar. So this is my, uh, the, the slides are here if you want to follow. Taming UI. OK. Before we start, let's uh, address some questions you might have. Do I need to know about state machines? Well, uh, not really. It's fine if you don't know anything, because we have a, a simple example. Do I need to know TypeScript? Well, here, uh, maybe you should know a little. Or even if you don't know TypeScript, you should be, I mean, you should uh, know a, a little bit uh, about types, which is OK, because everybody knows about types a little. OK, so what are state machines? Uh, and we'll see we have an example from the real world at first. This is a reverse vending machine, which means that it gives you money for stuff. <laughs> it's quite uh, interesting. And uh, for, for this case, uh, you can recycle uh, cans, and uh, then you get the reward. So it's pretty uh, nice that uh, it explains you have steps, as you see, might see, I hope you, you can see, uh, Step one, do something, step two, and so on. And as we will see, this also is a state machine, not just a vending machine. <laughs> so it's a state machine, so it has states. And it can be idle at first. We can insert the can, and it becomes loaded. We can press the green button, and it starts recycling. And now we have to do something that is not written anywhere, uh, wait for recycling. And then we're done. And we can collect the reward. And, and now the, the machine goes back to the idle state and can, can be used again. So to be more abstract, we can define, we can define this as a diagram. And it's the same thing. I'm not going to go over again. This is pretty simple. It's really basic state machine. And this is the ideal model. It's, um, something that we, we wish uh, the users of the machine would do if they are well, be well behaved. But the user might not be always that well behaved. And uh, when the machine is idle, instead of inserting the can, they can press the button. Maybe they had a bad day. Who knows? Or maybe they can try to collect the reward somehow. Or wait for recycling. <laughs> Of course, the, first, the last two are, are a joke, OK? But uh, the first one is real, and it's an action that the user can do at any point. And also is inserting the can. So the, the machine doesn't, might stop you, but it usually don't, don't stop you from doing anything at any time. So this is the, the case with the physical machines. Now, we are software developers, and we build apps, so we can do better. And there are implementations of state machines in JavaScript. The most well-known is uh, xState, which is a great library, has a lot of features, and it's uh, widely used. Uh, it can specify states and transitions quite easily. You have an initial state, and then you have transitions from one state to the other. That's straightforward. It's also written in TypeScript, which is nice, because you have some guarantees. but does not enforce transitions. So it has types, but 
you cannot specify at compile time what transitions you can make with the machine. So you see that you can still insert can as many times as you want, and it says loaded. <laughs> okay. What about Redux? <laughs> What about Redux? It's, this is a state machine <laughs> talk. So, okay, what do you mean? Maybe if we think about it that's in, from some point of view, maybe Redux is a state machine. And maybe Redux is a state machine with one, one state. And you're gonna think I'm crazy because, okay, Redux has one state, it's a store state, right? And to avoid that confusion that uh, React and Redux and other libraries use state to define the data, and uh, in this talk we have a, we talk about state machines, we're gonna call data model. So, let's see a simple example of an app, a very interesting app. Uh, you can log in if uh, you are the right user. Hero should be a good user. And you can put your name to lowercase. That's a great app. <laughs> Useful. So, our Redux app. I hope the font is big enough. <laughs> um, we have the model, and for those of you who don't know TypeScript at all, uh, the question mark means that uh, the field is optional. So, in our, our model, we have uh, also the error and the name, because we can have an error and a name if the user is logged in, but they're both optional because we might not have them. And we have some simple actions. We don't, don't use any, this is a demo, so we don't use uh, requests or server. We just log in success and log in error when the user presses the button, and then we can go get the name to lowercase and we can log out. And we have a reducer that it's pretty straightforward, nothing fancy if you are f quite familiar with Redux or even if you're not, for any action it just uh, changes the model. But, as you maybe can see, we have an issue here. And since uh, this, is, this example is in TypeScript, the compiler will uh, kind of yell at us and say, well, model name is not always there. It's, it can be undefined. And then we say, well, but I only call the name to lowercase action when the user is logged in, so I know it's there. What, what do you mean? And then we have an operator that's the bang operator in TypeScript, which basically means shut up, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> we usually don't. <laughs> so that's maybe the so a source of bugs. But the root cause of this is that uh, the model of our app is wrong. So we, we hold together data that doesn't really belong together. We have also the error and the name. Is it possible we can host, have a name and an error? I mean, the user logs in, but it has an error? It doesn't make sense. So maybe we need to split the model by state. And by state, I mean the state from the state machines. <laughs> so going back to our uh, our uh, vending machine uh, example, but only that now we, uh, we attach some model to the, to the state. So we have the logged out uh, state, which is the initial one, and we, can, we have an error. Here it is optional because we don't always have an error if it's, o it's okay, no, no error. And we can transition uh, from logged out to the same, uh, to the same state uh, with a uh, login error which is basically similar to what we saw with Redux, only that now it's a transition between states. So, and uh, you can see it's a string there, so login error takes a payload, we'll, we'll call it a payload, and it means that uh, it's a transition that can, can also hold data. So when you get an error, we transition to the same state, but we, ho we set the error on the model. We can also transition between states, and when we get login success, we go to the logged in state with a name. And the nice thing here is that the name is no longer optional. So we logged in, so we are, we are sure that we have a name because we have a user. So now we can safely do name to lowercase, and then we can log out if you want. Okay, so far so good. This looks good, I guess. But 
still we don't solve the, the issue of restricting transitions at compile time. At, at runtime, it should be easy. It should have a function like, can I transition from this state to the other? But it would be nice, since we have types, to, to restrict transitions. And before we, we see how we can do that, let's see how UI is handled in Redux. We have the view, which is a React component mostly, and, uh, or another, another uh, library, or view. Or <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, sorry, <laughs> I work with React. Um, can be anything, and we have the store. And uh, the view is external to the store. Uh, it uses its model, and then it dispatches actions to, to it. And the same, uh, the same idea is with xState, only that it, it has different names. So, but the basic idea is the same. And here, the view is external. So the view has no information about the machine from a compile time point of view, from a static point of view. So what we, if we invert the control? What we, if, we, if we let the machine uh, take care of the views and uh, tell the views what they can do and what they cannot do? So we have the machine, and we give it a logged out view, and we give it the error. And then the logged out uh, view, with the, from that view, the user can uh, dispatch with a click or whatever. It can dispatch back to the machine only the login success and login error, like we, we, we would expect. And we have the same with uh, logged in. And OK, I thought about these things because I thought that they were interesting. And I started writing a proof of concept, which turned into a library. Uh, it's called Type Machine. Not very original, but that's it, I guess. And uh, it's, it's open source, but it's really not production ready, so don't, don't judge. <laughs> uh, but it's good enough for a demo, so I'd like to show you. Um, I don't have a live coding, actually. I have a recorded, so. Sorry. OK, so first we define the machine. And it's going to be pretty fast. I'm going to stop it at some point. We define the state in TypeScript. It's a logged in or logged out. And this is a very important. We define the, a template for the machine. And uh, this is some TypeScript magic, but <laughs> you, the basic idea is that for each state, we define its model, like we saw. So uh, logged out has an error model. We have the transition payloads. And I want to stop a little, because this is, might be tricky to understand at first. Uh, transition payloads, it, it means the, the type of the data associated with transitions. So we saw uh, before that on login success and login error, uh, we can have strings, because we want to pass the error or the name, respectively. We have the same for logged in state. And here, the pay payloads are uh, null, because we don't pass any data with the transitions. And that's it. This is the template. It's very important. And basically, this tells us, this describes our, our machine, basically. It, it tells us what types, what transitions can be done, and so on. And now we actually define the machine factory, which is actual code. So far, it was just types. And this machine factory takes, basically describes the transitions. And for the logged out state, we can do login error and login success. And each function, it's basically a, like a reducer. We get the model and the payload, and we transition to another state with, a, with its model. Here, we don't use the model. We just use the payload for the transitions. And OK. Uh, this is the, in the logged in state, we, as, as we said, uh, as, I, as I said before, we get the model name and we do the lowercase to, uh, to lowercase on it. And the compiler would not complain because the name is always defined. And here, we just, from logout, we just transition to logged out and no, no error. 
So that's basically it. Now we have a machine. And the nice thing about this machine is that it's abstract. We have no React or Vue or whatever other uh, library, uh, rendering library code here. And now we'll have to, to actually make it work. We have to use ad an adapter. And for this case, it's, uh, it's React because uh, this is the first adapter that I wrote. And we define the, the props for the, the component. And then we have a, a basically a component, a machine adapter that takes a machine and views. As I said before, the, the machine controls the views. So for, uh, for each state, we have a different view. So for, for this one, we have the logged out uh, view that, uh, yeah, we give it the, we have a, a form, a simple form. We give it valid names so we know who can log in and who cannot. We have the error, which is in the model. And here is the, the nice thing. On these callbacks, when the user uh, is uh, successfully logged in, we, we can dispatch login success. But as you see, we have some errors. And we can, we can see here that uh, the compiler knows that we can only do login success and login error from this state. So this is basically what we wanted to do. And also, it knows that it, it should take a string. So when you log in success, you must give it, when you transition with login success, you must uh, also provide the name. So we do just that. We provide the name. And for error, we provide the error. And we have the same with logged in. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, so these are our, uh, this is an adapter. Now, it, we have a React component that basically uses the machine and renders the current state of the, of the machine and then wait, it waits for, uh, action, for transitions to, to get back and then uh, changes the current state. And it's pretty easy to, to inject this in our application. We just need the machine with the state logged out and the model for that state. And we, we render the component, and yeah, this is, should be fine. Okay, I hope I didn't lose too many people. <laughs> You're still here? <laughs> okay, so as I said, uh, it's not only React. It, it's the, the demo is in React because that's what I, I use day to day. But as you saw in the first, uh, the first, uh, a uh, file that, uh, that was there, the machine is abstract, so we can uh, actually use it in uh, many technologies. We, we just need to write the adapter, which is quite easy to write. And the same machine, so it can be used with different views, even in the same technology, so we can have two components that use the same machine. And also with different adapters, so we, have, we can have a machine that we can share throughout our code with different technologies. So what I, what I did is exactly that. I wrote a machine, and uh, I, uh, then I, I wrote some examples and some adapters, but not in a very nice way. For, for Vue.js, for the CLI, the simple CLI application that does stuff and uh, the, actually works with the machine. And this is the interesting part. I also wrote it on the server side. I wrote a simple Koa, which is similar to Express, a simple Koa server that uh, based on the state, uh, renders different routes. So instead of rendering something to the user, it uh, uh, exposes different routes for a given state. So, yeah, I hope at some point you can say it works on my machine. Thanks.